Well, this is Jim, and I live in Texas, but now I'm at Trinity Site on the White Sands Mitchell Range in New Mexico, and I've just driven 778.8 miles to get here. Uh, this is the parking lot. I haven't been to the site yet. Uh, they have uh, dedicated motorcycle parking right by the entrance, which is pretty classy. Bike is running great. I'm extremely pleased with this. Now, uh, look at the people here. We got the serious uh, long distance drivers coming here. It's really nice bikes. You know, no dilettantes, no squids. Just real long distance drivers. So, I drove about 130 miles from Roswell to get here, and I'm going to turn around and have to drive there to get back started home. <laughs> Boy, that's quite a thing there, those K, K bikes. And there's a fancy trike. Well, let's go see the site itself. It's interesting while well, I'm thinking. About it. This is the entrance to the detonation site itself. We're going to walk about a quarter of a mile to go down and, and see it. Lots of folks here today. Okay, I'm now at the entrance to the actual Ground Zero site. And uh, they tell you not to remo remove the Trinitite. That's not a reference to the criminal history of uh, Trinith the Moto Vlogger. Just kidding, Trinith. It's a uh, reference to the uh, sand that's been turned into glass. There's a, it'll turn this whole circle into glass almost. There's still a lot of pieces of it out here over the years. And uh, you're not supposed to pick them up and take them home because it's a historic site. And uh, there ahead, behind all those people, is the actual Ground Zero. This is Ground Zero, Trinity site where the world's first nuclear device was exploded on July 16th, 1945 and it's now a historical landmark. That's pretty much all that says. Uh, the bomb was a circular object because it was a plutonium bomb. And it was on a scaffold, on a kind of a big tower, like a windmill tower almost. No, I'm fine. And part of the footing of the tower is over where those folks are standing around that metal railing there. Uh, pretty much vaporized everything else. The nice thing about, well, there's first little lesson. There are uh, two kinds of fission bombs that you can make. The easy kind is a, is a uranium uh, projectile bomb. That's the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. That was called uh, uh, the, uh, what is it, Tall Boy? Or I can't remember. <laughs> It'll come back to me. But anyway, you just take, you take your uranium and you uh, take 10% of the power production of the United States and separate out the really good uranium, uh, enriched uranium, make it into, uh, make a target, which is a circle, a kind of a cylinder with a hole in it, and then you make a bullet of the other part of it. The two parts, when they're apart, are less than critical mass. You just have a cannon in your bomb, a short cannon, it fires the projectile into the target, and when they come together, you have critical mass, and boom, no more Hiroshima. Uh, a more difficult kind of bomb to make is a plutonium bomb. That, that's why they had to test this first. Uh, they were not certain that it would even work because it requires that you put uh, a cylinder, like a basketball uh, size shape of plutonium that's not quite critical, i.e. it's not gonna just self-detonate. You surround it with really complex, carefully designed explosive lenses, set the lenses off exactly the right time down to the nanosecond, it compresses the basketball of, uh, of plutonium into a, a uh, baseball. That creates a critical mass of plutonium and you get in a bigger explosion with less fissionable material. Uh, so that's what they had to test that first and that bomb, when they have one over here, I'll show you in a minute, that was dropped on Hiroshima. Excuse me, it was dropped on Nagasaki. The second bomb was a plutonium bomb. Uh, and then the first bomb detonated was a plutonium bomb something right up to the end they were not sure would work but it did 
this is what a operational plutonium bomb looks like the fat man was the bomb dropped on uh, Nagasaki and and uh, you, the, uh, the volleyball or basketball sized piece of plutonium is right in the center of that and surrounding it are explosive lenses the probes on the front of the bomb are radar altimeters because they made this go off I think about a thousand feet on the ground which was well, they thought the optimum and it certainly uh, in some way a lot of ways was better because it creates less fallout than one that went off right on the ground so anyway uh, because of bombs like this we can't have World War three in the way we did you can't have wars that involve millions of people and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of casualties anymore because if one superpower tried to physically invade another these would start going off so I really think that they're a net force for good they're a dangerous thing but I think they've uh, there's a reason why <laughs> you know the Soviet Union and the Western Europe and the United States never duked it out and this is why if we hadn't had this there would have been a World War III another millions and millions of people killed but that can't happen when these are in the mix. Not mean, I mean you can't ever have a war, but you can't ever have a global war. Because sooner or later somebody will get tired of it and drop one of these and then the shooting's over. Well, uh, that's about all there is to see here really. Uh, that uh, bunker there, it has a sign that says, used to be able to see a big sheet of trinidite here, but it's covered by sand. <laughs> so they closed the window to it. But uh, this is what you see. They have a, around the perimeter fence, they have pictures and some information about the, the atomic program, the Manhattan Project. You can see that uh, uh, General Groves and Dr. Oppenheimer picked a, an awfully isolated place, awfully isolated. Uh, to do their uh, do their experiment, uh, White Sands Missile Range is uh, I think about 200 miles long. We're about 20 miles into the northern end of it. It goes well beyond those mountains down there, down towards almost Alamogordo. And although it doesn't get the publicity of Area 51, there's no such place as Area 51, but the Nellis Ranges. Uh, uh, even though it doesn't get the publicity, there's there's just as much or more spooky stuff here, which is why the guys with guns tell you to put your cameras away, except when you're here at the site. Now, oh, by the way, my still camera batteries ran out. Port safety tip: you have to walk a quarter mile back to your bike and come back if you want to get more still pictures. But I got the obelisk, and that's the main. This is Jim, the Trinity site in New Mexico.